I'm going to guide you through another code challenge using strings and basic programming. So let's get started. Welcome back fellow coders. My name is Fernando. If this is your first time here and would like to learn coding and design, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Comment down below if you enjoy coding challenges and which one is your favorite coding website, whether it be Code Wars, Hacker Rank, etc. The first thing is to browse for a good kata. I will look for something easy for beginners and as we progress, we can ramp up the difficulty of the kata. So let's browse together and see what we can find. I have a bit of a confession to make. In episode 1, I had already pre-selected the kata mainly because I wanted to run through the IDE, but today's challenge is real time. Here on the left side you have filters. You can select difficult levels here by dragging. You can select one language in particular. I'm going to choose Java for today's challenge. You can also select different tags. Let's click on fundamentals. Actually, let me select strings tag 2. Okay, I'm just scrolling to see if anything catches my eye here. Let's see which are in and what is that all about. Okay, we are given two arrays, A1 and A2, and we need to return an array R in lexicographical order of the strings of A1, which are substrings of A2. I'm sorry, which are substrings of strings of A2. Now in plain English, if you look at the example 1, the first string is in, in A1 is ARP. ARP will iterate 5 times through A2 each time, and A2 string contains A1, we will add A1 to R. If we look at the notes, it indicates that R must be without duplicates, so keep that in mind. Still talking about ARP, ARP is found in HARP and sharp. So we will add it to R. Now the first assigned choice that I'm going to make is that we're going to use a nested loop in order to check our strings. So if you don't know what nested loops are, check the link in the description. Now here comes the assigned choice. Will you keep checking A2 if it already has found a string that contains A1? We could exit out of the loop and continue with the next string value, or we could also check if the string already exists in R. Either way, it should be fine. But I think for a larger scale project, the first option will be a winner because we cannot have duplicates in R, might as well skip the remaining A2 strings. Okay, so now that we know exactly what we need to accomplish, Let's jump into the IDE. I will use the project that we used last time. If you haven't already watched episode 1, I suggest you watch the setup portion. There are bookmarks in the description for easy access. Let's click on the train button and copy the classes onto our project. Copy which are in class and in the IDE create a new class. Name it which are in and replace the code in it. Let's get back to the website and let's copy the test class. Place the cursor in the class and then hit Alt Enter. Click OK and then replace the everything with what we copied. Now let's begin by writing some notes in the which are in class. Our first comment is so that we can know what we need to do in plain English. Let's write a few more comments here and begin writing our algorithm steps. Remember. I'm doing this live, so I will probably make mistakes. The first tab, we need to check if A2 contains A1 within this string, and we need to build a list when a match is found. Step 2, we will sort the list alphabetically. Our third step will be to return the array sorted. Let's add some variables. Let's add a string array and let's call it unsorted strings. So another array 
and let's call this one sorted strings. Let's begin our first step and add a nested loop. We want to iterate through all the strings and since we have two arrays, we need to use a nested loop. If there's a match in our inner loop, then we will add it to the array. We are using the contain method, contains method, which is found in the string class. If arp is found in sharp, it will return true, otherwise it will be false. Actually, let's use the list here since we don't know the size we need and lists are mutable, as opposed to arrays which there are immutable. We'll change unsorted strings to an array list of type string. Let me organize the imports. And I'm not sure why list imports not imported automatically. That's a bit strange. Let me change this to list. Okay, now it gets rid of the error. Okay, so if the string is matched, let's add the particular string to the unsorted string list. Change the comment to list since we are using an array list now. And here we simply do a static call to collections and perform a sort method on our list. One thing I overlooked in the beginning is that we needed to actually return an array of strings. So let's add one more step to our algorithm where we simply will copy items from the list to the array. For that, we obviously need a new variable, an array of string and call it sort of strings. The first thing we need to do is to initialize the array Remember, arrays are immutable and needs to know the size. We will use the size of unsorted strings list here. Okay, now for the meat and potatoes, as they say, we will do the copy operation in a for loop to keep things simple. You've seen the for loop before, nothing new here. In our last step, let's return the sorted string in our method in array. Okay, so now that our algorithm is ready, we can run our test and see what we get. Okay, the test failed with a index out of mount exception. Nothing out of the ordinary here. We always expect errors the first time we run a program. Let's put a breakpoint and debug test one. And all we need to do here is step in until we get an exception. So I'm just going to keep pressing F7 until we get to the nested loop. Okay, here what I want you to do while I'm pressing the F7 key and just looking at the variables, I want you to pay close attention to the I values on the variable wash table. And you can also see them up here, uh, green I0 and J0. So just keep watching the eye. We only have five items and that should be index zero to four because we count zeros in a race. We count from zero to whatever in a race. And so just keep watching. Eventually I, I is gonna go to five and I'm gonna show you next what I did wrong. By the way, most IDEs, uh, when you are debugging, they show you what the what variables are inside the uh, editor. So for example, if you hover over the brackets on array two or array one in the loop, it tell you what the current string is, depending on the index. So that's something nice to know when you're troubleshooting uh, your code that you can see some of that information on the editor itself. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so I is now at five and we shouldn't be at five. Uh, so when I hit F7 again, it should break the code and should give us an exception.
and I kid you not, I was troubleshooting this for about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, obviously, I didn't put all that video because that was just a redundant video, me going back and forth, changing the I's and the J's, and uh, it had me questioning myself for a little bit. Once I found the problem, I was hitting my head. Okay, here I thought there was something wrong with my condition. And so I changed the length and I run it again just to test it again. And obviously the test fails again. Okay, this is the moment of truth where I look at my inner loop and I see an ah again. And so I change the link back to where it was in the beginning. So make sure that you pause the video and you check the code. Make sure you have the same thing on the uh, for loop. Okay, let's check the for loop again. And let's switch those the i and j here. And also change the j to a i inside the if statement. Let's run the test again. And now we're getting a green light. So one typo in the whole program and had me switching I's and J's and it was all in the for loop statement. Anyways, I should probably add a nested loop uh, live template in this IDE to avoid silly mistakes again. I will put a link in the video and show you how to do live templates for IntelliJ IDA. Lastly, let's copy our program and run it in code words. So just control all in the control copy. And we'll paste it here and we'll run the sample test first. It should be green because it's the same thing we have. Okay, that's green. That's good. Let's do the attempt and fingers crossed. And luckily all the tests passed. Let's go ahead and submit the final solution. And then you can browse all the other code as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you have one challenge in particular that you would like me to do. Uh, you can also hit me up on Twitter at QuatermanFB. If you want to watch more videos like this, Hit like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and remember to carve with a purpose.